This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman and Riley Smith. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Dustin Hoffman. Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Dustin Huffman. Today is Tuesday, May the 17th, 2022. Thanks for joining us. Coming up in today's program, well, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds signed the Biofuels Access Bill. Our own Riley Smith was there with our new intern, Avery Haskell, and they bring us the latest from that event. I also had the chance to talk fuel with the folks at New Century FS and getting some idea of what Iowa producers need to be thinking about this year. We also have a check of your ag weather outlook, but first, let's run down the markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. Well, the trading day is over for Tuesday, and we're going to see how things shook out today. And for that, we turn to Jacob Burks of agmarket.net. Jacob, how's it going today? Well, I don't think anybody can complain, especially if you're in the wheat market, Uh, so we (laughs) Had a pretty good day uh, in the grains. Uh, corn market ended up selling off here last night following the wheat market. In the At the end of the day here, we, we, we did rally and bounce back a little bit in the corn market. Uh, the front months of the corn did not, uh, did not trade as well. We stayed about eight lower in July contract. Uh, December contract was down three and a half at the end of the day, uh, 761 on the close. But the excitement came in through the wheat market. Uh, we've seen a lot of different news stories come in. Uh, the, the leader of this uh, news story is the, the ban on in, India banning exports uh, come through yesterday with a limit up close. We had expanded limits coming in last night. We used a part of that. Uh, and, and then the news uh, of uh, some India sales to Egypt uh, and probably a country to country sell uh, pushed that uh, that wheat market down. We end up having an exciting 84 cent uh, trading range in the, in the Chicago wheat. Uh, but here at the end of the day, we actually closed 30 cents higher on the day. Beans followed suit as well, ended up 22 cents higher in, ju- in the July contract. November up 13 cents on the day. Trading up at 15.25, 15.30 was the high. So we're nearing some of those contract highs in that November soybean contract. All right. So going back to wheat for just a second, we did hear when India uh, you know, put this ban in place, though, it was over private company exports, not over contracts that they're doing with their government. So, I mean, what's what's the story there? Or is that the way it's shaking out right now? Well, I, I think you got to step back and take a, you know, 10,000 foot view of this wheat market. This is talking about food, uh, food security. Uh, in these countries, uh, you know, who, who's, who's going to take the place uh, of Ukrainian uh, void that, that we're leaving with this, uh, this export situation we have uh, due to the Russian invasion? Uh, India comes in, has about 8 million metric ton uh, of production to be able to export. Sounds like about one to two has already went out. Uh, so that leaves a, uh, you know, it's about 5 million metric ton there to, to be able to export. And they came in ex- excited about their production, had a little bit of dryness. So their fear in their country has taken them to the point where they want to pump the brakes a little bit uh, and take care of their own people, which uh, the scary part, is, as you see these type of situations across the globe, uh, it is is that the the fear of not being able to take care of their own and wheat is such a, a big part of, of the the protein needed uh, for their people. Therefore, you saw you saw them pump the brakes, and then the the market got a little confused. I felt like overnight, whenever there was actually a sale to Egypt, uh, and then when you get back and take a closer look at what they were actually banning, it was that private export private exporters, uh, not so much the government. And it sounds like this might have been a government to government deal that they already had the credit for. All right, and so now soybeans, we know just like uh, with yesterday, all the grains kind of just went along for the ride with wheat, but what was uh, driving soybeans today? Was it still kind of riding on that as well, or what, what's moving that market too? Uh, well, you know, I, th- I think a little bit, uh, you got, you know, this is such a weather-driven market right now. You, you know, we haven't even really looked at uh, the pace that we've been planting soybeans, uh, but that has a, you know, a driving factor as well. Uh, you know, really the rumors right now are, are, are driven up mostly on demand stories, uh, you know, you know, looking at when, when and where these bean market is going to be able to take over exports in this late summer time frame uh, for next year uh, is, is kind of what everybody's looking at right now. And I think that the, the, the soybeans 
uh, you're, you're talking about adding maybe acres in from uh, the corn market as you get into these uh, wet areas up in the northern part of the belt. Uh, but all in all, you got a, a you know bean market. If you look, this is seven days in a row for new crop. Uh, it's, it's, I would say that's kind of kind of a surprise right now. Uh, and I think a little bit of that is, hey, if we're going to get into uh, the, the prevent plant, are these guys going to pound uh, corn in to to take care of some of the contracts that they've already you know already have uh, you know contracted? Uh, and, and so maybe that doesn't uh, portray into some of the, the soybean acres going in. So a little, little bit of confusion, there, I think, across the soybean uh, marketplace right now. But it was mostly a, a demand driven. You saw a little bit of a decline in the crush last month. Uh, but I think you're going to see some, uh, you know, just just pure stronger demand right now uh, for all these commodities and beans just, uh, you know, riding the wave right now. So turning our attention to the livestock side of things, how did cattle and hogs fare out there today? Well, the hog market, I think, has been impressive, and I think that's uh, uh, that's been the, the the contract that had everybody scratching their heads last week so much. And if you take a look at what the funds have done, uh, you know, week over week, that's about twenty thousand contracts of their length is gone now. And if you if you look at what they did last week in in, in that kind of uh, continued sell off, uh, the continued bloodbath, if you will, uh, it, it probably sold off with you know quite a bit further than what it should have. And so you're seeing uh, the market come back this week off of a technical bounce. And, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those uh, funds come back into that hog market right now. Uh, you're holding above that dollar in that June contract uh, now. And that's I think that's you know just a psychologically significant number. Cattle market, pretty quiet day here, 30 to 40 lower. Uh, you, you saw your cash trade a little bit lower this week. There's just not a very good story right now in the cattle market. Uh, I think the story is building. The story is there. And everybody's just kind of waiting to... Uh, Hopefully, I see that V top shaped bottom in, in these cattle markets as well. Uh, the, the, the numbers are not there, but right now, the, the number of cattle uh, are just not out there for, for the future needs. But you're also seeing a box beef number that's uh, you know, counter seasonally going down uh, during the grilling, grilling season. So we need to see some of that demand pick up. And I think that's what's going to drive this, uh, uh, this cattle market. Feeder cattle are seeing, you know, Pretty much step in step with whatever these this corn market is doing today. You saw a down feeder cattle market in the in the midst of a down corn market, uh, but there's been a pretty good uh, inverse relationship uh, in the last two weeks in that feeder cattle market. My my question is, you know, we've been talking about how you know, like you mentioned today, the box beef price is a little counterproductive right now. Normally, when we're seeing this demand, they'd be going higher. How much of that is going to have effect or caused by just the inflation economy right now? With people being very careful about what they're spending on. Well, yeah, I think I think you know, for us, you know, we go and buy our staples, and and uh, mostly for the, the the people that we're trying to export beef to, uh, I think it's a little bit different than the average American as well. You know, it doesn't matter how much it costs me; I'm gonna buy that T-bone at least once this summer, so we can put it on the grill and and have a good steak and have that good cookout. Uh, but you get to the other parts, uh, uh, you know, of the of you know the world. Uh, Export demand uh, is just, you know, simply not going to be there because uh, that disposable income, you uh, know, for the global inflation that we're seeing right now, and, and I think that you're you're going to have a hard time uh, selling the higher end products, which is what you know our beef contract uh, is based off of. All right, well, a lot of great information as always, Jacob. If folks out there want to talk about some marketing strategies, how do they get in touch with the folks at AgMarket.net? The best way is to simply go to our website. We would really encourage you to sign up for our, we got a 30 day trial of our uh, agmarket.net Intel. That's the best spot to get the hold of us. Uh, you'll be able to catch, uh, be sure and catch Brian Split. He leads our technical discussions on Wednesdays. And so there's just a lot of really, really good information. You can look me up and find me there. I'd love to chat with you. All right. Well, Jacob, we thank you so much for the insight. We'll talk again real soon. Thanks, Dustin. And that was Jacob Burks of agmarket.net. Let's go ahead and take a look at the closing numbers from the folks at Bar Chart. July corn was down eight cents at eight oh one and a half. December new crop down four and a half at seven sixty one. July beans up twenty one and three quarters at sixteen seventy eight and a quarter. November up twelve and a half at fifteen twenty four and a half. Soy meal down ninety cents at four oh eight twenty. Soy oil is up eighty two cents at eighty twenty four. Chicago wheat twenty nine and three quarters cents higher at twelve eighty and three quarters. Minneapolis up ten and three quarters at thirteen eighty nine and a half. Kansas wheat up fifteen and a half at thirteen sixty nine and a quarter. Oats up 13 and a half at 608 even. 
August live cattle were down 42 cents at 133.47. August feeders down 90 cents at 166.52. June lean hogs were $1.25 higher at 105.07. Pork cutouts a buck five higher at 110.65. Class three milk up three cents at 25.02. That was our ag market recap on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. We're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, Governor Kim Reynolds signed the Biofuels Access Bill today. And our own Riley Smith was out there with our intern, Avery, and they got some of the comments coming from that event. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to AMPM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Avery and I were in Prairie City today to watch Governor Reynolds sign the new biofuels access bill. Of course, this bill has a lot of important effects for Iowa producers and consumers. And this is what Governor Reynolds had to say before the event. I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here. This is an exciting day for Iowa as we sign truly a landmark biofuels uh, bill into law. And I, too, want to start then by thanking Will and Cassie Cannon for hosting us. Gordon, thank you also for being a part of that and hosting us today. And truly, I can't imagine uh, a better setting to sign this bill. As you've heard, ethanol, biodiesel, they supply our state, country, and world with a cleaner burning, uh, more affordable biofuels. I love the fact that we've got cover crops in the background. That is so cool. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, Will has been farming for about 20 years, so you've got a great uh, legacy to build on here. And not only do you, you host uh, the, between you and Gordon, I think, World Expo International dinners in over multiple years. So you do a great job, I think, of showcasing the world, uh, the great role that uh, Iowa plays in, in agriculture. But it does all start on farms like this one in every corner of our state where the soy and corn uh, feedstock is growing. So again, I'm grateful to Will and Cassie for taking time out of their day, especially when we got a late start to planting season this year and everybody's trying to get those crops uh, in the field. So thank you. I think maybe you're really close, right? Today really may close. be it. So, yeah. okay, we just yeah. need I'm going to talk really quick. Okay. Um, you know, and let's just kind of back up, too, for just a little bit. For well over a year, we've been working on different versions of this bill. And the final product truly is a testament to uh, the idea that good faith discussion, negotiation, and compromise can pay off in a big way. And, and there's a lot of people to thank, so bear with me. Uh, first of all, I want to start with the legislative champions and floor managers of the bill, Representative Hines, Senator Brown, who was not able to join us today, and Senator Zahn. Thank you for your work in helping us get this across the finish line. And then all of the legislators who stepped up, and this was a bipartisan bill and got it done. So I want to thank them. I don't know if Secretary Nag is here, but I want to thank him too. We've got one of the best uh, secretaries of agriculture in the country, so I appreciate all his work on this. The Iowa Renewable Fuels Association, Iowa Corn Growers Association, Iowa Soybean Association, Iowa Biodiesel uh, Board, Iowa Farm Bureau. Oh, he's back here. There he is. There's the president. <laughs> Iowa farmers and fuel retailers, especially Come and Go, High V, and Quick Star, and everyone along the uh, fuel supply chain who have stepped up to make this a reality. My sincere thanks to each and every one of you for coming to the table to help us get this bill across the finish line. And I've never been prouder than I am today to be the governor of the number one ethanol and biodiesel producing state in the country. Uh, bio biofuels account for four billion of Iowa's GDP and support tens of thousands of jobs in our state. It powers our economy and it fuels the world. And this position of uh, global leadership means that what we do here reverberates far beyond our borders. When we talk, people listen. And we've never spoke, spoken more loudly or more clearly than we are today. This historic bill makes Iowa the first state in the nation to adopt an E15 standard, setting the stage for the single largest expansion of biofuels in our state's history. <laughs> it also doubles it also doubles the biodiesel production tax credit to incentivize production in Iowa, increases the fuel retailer tax credit 
to expand consumer access, future proofs our fuel infrastructure, and makes needed improvements to the uh, renewable fuel infrastructure program. And it honestly couldn't have come at a better time. Gas prices have never been higher, and Iowans are anxious for um, alternatives. Um, we want to encourage Americans who can't afford gas to buy. Uh, the administration is encouraging Americans who can't afford gas to buy an electric car. Is that's no solution. The true answer is biofuels. Ethanol is cleaner burning, and it's 70 to 80 cents less expensive than gasoline. And just as important, biofuels are made right here at home, furthering uh, our uh, energy independence and security. Um, and then another component of this that we're working on that's really exciting is, you know, I recently led a bipartisan group of eight Midwestern governors to formally request the EPA to allow states to sell E15 year-round without restriction on a permanent basis. And I'm very grateful uh, for the um, the temporary waiver that the president did uh, this year, but it is it is temporary, and it's time that we finish the job. So, I propose the um, the biofuels bill because Iowa farmers and renewable fuel producers are the economic backbone of our state. Because Iowans and Americans deserve access to reliable, less expensive, environmentally friendly option at the pump. Iowa has delivered, and in doing so, we've sent a message that can't be ignored. America's energy is growing right here in Iowa's fields. That again was Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds. We'll go ahead and kick it over to Dustin Hoffman for our Ag Weather Outlook. Well, the sunshine was out and about here early this morning in Des Moines, and it was quite nice to start the day, but clouds have started to roll their way in, and we have a chance of showers and thunderstorms building even as we speak. Could see some stronger thunderstorms coming in tonight. Let's take a look at what we've got for the next 24 hours from the National Weather Service. Well, we saw plenty of sunshine to start the day here in Des Moines and likely around the state. But as that day progressed, clouds started to build in and we'll see that shower activity start to build in here as the day goes on. Temps were mainly in the 70s, even 80 around parts of the state. Now tonight, showers and thunderstorms will be likely across most of the state. Some of those storms could be severe in the west. We'll see some temperatures ranging from the mid-50s to the low 60s. Tomorrow, showers will start the day in many areas, but we'll start to see that sun start to break out faster and faster across the state. And we'll see temperatures ranging from the low to upper 70s. Now taking a look at the affiliate weather map we see in Cherokee, they're going to have partly cloudy skies in 78 tomorrow. Shenandoah will see storms push off and give way to partly cloudy skies in 79. Des Moines will see the same kind of activity but a high of 78. Albia and Waterloo will also see those showers and thunderstorms start to push off for sunshine. And we'll see highs of 75 and 73 respectively. And Clinton will see showers and cloudy skies through most of the day and a high of 72. And that's been a look at your Ag Weather Outlook. We're going to take a short break here on Ag Matters PM. When we come back, I talk with the folks at New Century FS in Grinnell talking about the situation with fuel and the supplies available for farmers throughout this growing season. This is Ag Matters PM. As we approach planting season, make sure you stay safe and share the road with your local farmers. Slow-moving tractors with large planters occupy a lot of space on the road, so stay patient and follow at a distance of around 50 feet. You should never, ever try to pass them at a bridge, intersection, hill, or curve. It's far better than putting yourself or someone else at risk. So please, stay safe and remember to tip your hat to your local farmer this planting season. This message was brought to you by your friends at the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. Welcome back to AMPM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Dustin Huffman. Well, we just had the governor sign the biofuels access bill, but that, of course, is not the end-all, be-all of the fuel situation here in Iowa. Obviously, you don't need to go very far to see what the price tags are on diesel fuel. And you know that we need those for the tractors and all the implements and even the trucks that keep us going throughout the year. Of course, we also have to start thinking about already the fuels we need for drying our crops when it comes out of the field. I had a chance to talk with Jay Christie of New Century FS in Grinnell, and he tells us about the things that Iowa producers need to be thinking about. All right, so what we're talking about is fuel. Obviously, we can go past the gas pumps and see that fuel prices are high, and we look at those diesel prices, and they're even higher. And, of course, you know, when oil goes up, we always talk about how well, it helps the soybean markets and things like that, and that's great, but eventually that starts eating into the profitability of farmers, especially when you're talking diesel fuel and other fuels. What are we seeing right now, Jay, that farmers need to be thinking about, especially as they're going through spring field work? Well, the the 
the thing that we say is keep your tanks full, especially this time of year, because um, you never know what supply is going to be like. Um, the pricing has started to come down, albeit just a little bit on the diesel fuel side and the gasoline side has been creeping up. Um, so, so our, our thing is, you know, as planting season continues is to stay full. Um, we have customers that have gallons contracted, um, get those gallons into your tank so we can get refilled and then get prepared for, you know, everybody's summer driving season and for the, uh, you know, the trucks and everybody that runs up and down the road. Um, you know, fuel usage is going to be up, um, you know, with the COVID pandemic, um, you know, taking a toll on on our fuel to start with. And then everybody kind of, you know, the 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 um, producers producing less diesel, less gas because of that. And then supply has outpaced the demand um, or the demand has outpaced the supply. Um, and, you know, refiners have not been in a hurry to ramp everything back up to pre-pandemic levels because, it, you know, they have run the risk of of uh, oversupplying and, and, you know, not being able to be profitable again like they were, you know, at the beginning of the 2020 there. And obviously diesel fuel is one of those things, Jay, that, you know, we obviously, we need it. It's a, it's a necessary evil to, to keep the operation going throughout the whole season. But let's say that we've got some operations that maybe haven't forward contracted very much further into the future, but are looking at some strategies to obviously not break the bank. What are some things they should be thinking about? Is there any seasonality to the prices that they might want to hold off a little longer or maybe be buying now before things get maybe even worse? Well, right now, the, the, the markets are what they consider backward dated as it is actually cheaper to buy the product in the future than it is currently. Um, so you can contract prices, you can contract fuel for fall for less than you could pay for it today. Um, you know, we, we encourage guys to do what they their level of risk um, is in it, it's, it's you know, it's not for everyone all the time, um, but knowing fully well, if you do contract fuel. Um, for the future that you do it in gallons that you you can take because we have to hold people's uh it's a contract you know you got to be able to take those gallons there's a penalty to pay because we have to bring those gallons in now of course we also think about fuel for the you know the fall drying and of course well we're still trying to plant fall drying is probably the least thing uh, last thing on our mind but uh what are some things that they need to be thinking about now already for getting some of those heating uh, fuel uh, taken care of yeah, I mean, we recommend, like I said before, we recommend everybody keeps stay full and keep there. There is the possibility of uh, supplies getting getting lower this year, just based on on production levels. And then you know we we, we still lack truck drivers in the trucking industry, and the, the fuel world is no different. Um, so they're just getting the supply to our bulk plants and getting it out to the farmers shouldn't be a problem. But long lines in the fall have typically been the case especially if we have a condensed uh, season where we start late and, um, you know, weather windows um, work out that they just is a tight supply is going to happen. And I've always, you know, always said it's like trying to feed a, a, you know, big tank through a garden hose, right? It only comes in so fast, but it comes out a lot faster. So that's, you know, we just recommend everybody all the time, just keep as full as they can. All right. Well, we definitely want to make sure that the, the farmers are taking care of just that. Now, there have been some talk about some stuff going on at government level, but how much help could that be in a situation like this when you have to rely on the market? Yeah, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't count on the government to help us out at all. Um, you know, the, they, the, the farm world has a lot of pull, um, but ultimately in the end, when it comes right down to it, we're going to be, you know, on our own essentially. And then, you know, that's why we always say to work with a good quality uh, supplier. Um, you know, that has quality fuel and um, has, has a good supply and is planned for that supply. You know, there's allocation things to take into account. There is, um, you know, we, we have the ability to contract. We have a lot of other abilities, but, you know, quality fuel, um, making sure you have good filtration on that stuff to make sure that, you know, when you're ready to go, um, that your equipment's going to work right and not break down. Um, you know, it's, it's probably the best thing a farmer can do. It's very inexpensive to do all that stuff. And, and that, that, that is, you know, work, I guess, you know, work the plan, plan to work and work the plan. All right, Jay, last question I got for you being you're out there in the Grinnell area. I mean, how are things looking out there for guys moving and, and, and being able to get that, that fuel they need when they need it? Uh, pretty good right now. We've, we haven't had a problem. Um, we've been able to keep everybody full. It hasn't been an issue. 
Um, and I don't foresee it being an issue and it could be this fall, but, um, you know, I, I, I hope not. Um, we have a pretty good plan in place. We typically don't have those issues. So, um, we'll just see what, see what comes when, when we get there. And that again was Jay Christie of new century FS here on ag matters PM. And just like that, we're at the end of another episode. You can find all our content online at iowaagnet.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and find all of our video projects as well as past episodes of AMPM on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our free Twice Daily Market podcast through Amazon, Apple, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Dustin Huffman. For Riley Smith, this has been Ag Matters PM.